All right, welcome to the Monkey Strolls podcast. I'm Kiefer. Uh, I'm Caleb. And I'm Joe. All right, today we are going to be talking about Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. It's a 1971 film uh, starring Gene Wilder. This is the only one that exists, if you ignore the Johnny Depp one. And it's based on a book by Roald Dahl. Roald Dahl is the way I pronounce it. Roald. You have to look how it's how it's spelled. It's like Ronald with no N in there. Roald. Um, it tells the story of a poor kid named Charlie Bucket who finds a golden ticket, which is an invite to this mysterious world famous chocolate factory. And uh, the film was made for around three million bucks and they earned four. Four million. So not not a great success in the theater, but they just pumped it out on the on the TV for everyone. And it's, I mean, one of the most iconic movies ever now. So I'd say it's a success now. <clears throat> but that that about wraps up the history of the movie, unless we get into the surrounding drama from the author to the director and all the changes they made. Uh, just a quick tidbit that the writer, Roald Dahl, disowned the movie. He hated it. <laughs> he hated it with a passion. Um, but we can get into that more after we talk about what the movie's about, because they made some drastic changes. Yeah, yeah. what did you guys what did you guys think? I obviously love the movie. I've got mostly good things to say. Yeah, same here. I mean, I'd seen it from when I was a kid. I've seen it as an adult rewatching it it's uh it's just an awesome movie it's some truly unique and bizarre and interesting things i don't like musicals um, you know the thing with that is is i never considered this a musical because it's a good movie but watching it now this week i'm like oh this is a musical that i like <laughs> yeah I, I hate musicals but i i can watch this and get through it without cringing they they sing a lot in this um I, I don't necessarily, like, I don't love this movie. It's fine. Um, I would not have watched this on my own, honestly. Like, I've seen it a million times. I think everyone in the world has. Um, and this one, I mean, it's okay. The songs are whatever uh, in it. And they, they really are, like, the weak point of the movie for me. Um what totally makes it is just Gene Wilder's performance. Everyone else is kind of like, I mean, it's a bunch of children in the movie, and uh, yeah, it's a bunch of no ones too. Yeah, yeah. Like it, it's Gene Wilder. It supported by people you've never seen. <clears throat> yeah, but I, I definitely his performance helps carry it. Like, I don't think the movie would have been half as good if he wasn't in it. No, uh, I still, all. yeah, I still enjoy a lot about the movie, but yeah, it's just a awesome performance by him for sure he also did a he was very funny i mean there are things that were lost on me as a kid i didn't mm -hmm. get the sarcasm i didn't get he was kind of i mean there were crazy things happening but i didn't pick up on the humor yeah uh, oh please don't no, no yeah just no stop don't and this kid's like <laughs> gonna have to get squeezed by a fucking juice press machine and he said no don't yeah. Yeah, these kids are more or less roaming around this factory, killing themselves on his equipment. He's just like, oh, please, someone stop. But it's, I mean, if he didn't say at the end, oh, those kids are going to be fine, Charlie. I mean, yeah. uh, we don't know that those kids are fine. <laughs> yeah, it's it's left very open to interpretation for most of the movie, whether or not getting juiced is okay. <laughs> I mean, forget getting juiced. Mike has to, Mike TV has to get stretched by a taffy machine. He has That's to wait true. for Honey, I Blew Up the Kids to air and get that technology. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm more concerned about the fat kid drowning in chocolate. Like that's that scene realistic. caused me anxiety from a young age. It's like what <laughs> happened to Augustus? Yeah, he just just went in the tube where it's all liquid. Like <laughs> I don't know if he didn't drown. He probably drowned. Yeah, you're right. I mean, I don't know if you guys do this in movies, but I hold my breath in scenes where people are underwater. To see if it's, to see if it's realistic. Yeah, yeah. When Augustus falls underwater, I hold my breath until I see him breathe. 
<laughs> just, I do that with all underwater scenes. It's probably why they're my least favorite part of video games. But it's it, Augustus could have died there easily. easily. Uh, yeah. Look, man, as a fat kid, that's the way we want to go out. So he's just drowning <laughs> in chocolate. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So that scene. I mean, everybody has seen this movie, but if, in case you haven't, there's a kid. It's the first kid to go. They're they're being tested. That's that's the whole movie, yeah. Yeah, the first kid to go can't help himself from drinking out of the chocolate river, which Willy Wonka doesn't want people to touch. It's like, oh, it can't be touched by human hands. I don't think he warned them before, but anyways, the kid falls in, and uh, he falls into this chocolate river and gets sucked up and pumped out, and that's the end of his story. But they asked the actor, what did that chocolate river like obviously this set is elaborate and huge they'd make like this warehouse and do a candy land where everything's edible but this chocolate river it's obviously not feasible to have hundreds of thousands of gallons of flowing chocolate but they asked that actor who had to fall into it like what what was that like because it wasn't chocolate it was apparently like food coloring water and they tried pouring cocoa powder into it to make it murky. So there's actually chocolate in there, but it didn't really work out. <laughs> but the actor just said that it smelled like dirty water. Because <laughs> 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 he had to be in it. <laughs> dirty stinking water. <laughs> That's movie magic, then. Oh, it's not chocolate. It's dirty water. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that was probably one of my favorite scenes where he opens the small door. They're in like his factory is like a fun house mixed with a factory. Mm-hmm. And I mean, when they open the small door into the wide edible where the uh, edible candy land, that's probably mm-hmm. one of my favorite scenes besides the, the hell boat. I don't know what that yeah. was. About. The hell boat is what I was going to say. It's, pr- it's probably the best scene in the movie just because <laughs> it's, it's so different than tonally than the rest of the fucking movie. Like there's no other part of the movie. That's extremely scary. It's like, out it, of nowhere. Yeah. Like, it's scary for us to think what happened to that kid or whatever, but it doesn't play scary, like, if you're a kid or something and you're watching it. The Hellboat scene's fucking horrifying. And Gene Wilder just screaming. (laughs) No one knows where we're going. And then there's just just a video of, like, a bee or some, like, nightmare wasp. And you're like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> like that's a- actively terrifying. Like that that scene's fucking nuts. And it, it had the, the only time a scene like that's gonna be put in a movie is in the seventies. Like <laughs> that's the only time that's ever gonna happen. It's flashing with like psychedelic colors, reds, greens, purple, blues, and on the wall there's just like a chameleon and a worm <laughs> crawling across a guy's face. It was like pure terror. Yeah, out, out of nowhere. <laughs> and then after that they're just like oh we're here let's go in the room um <laughs> Kiefer, it sounds like you did a little bit of an investigation into like the changes because i know there were changes made i just don't know what they were um yeah did roald <laughs> doll have anything to say i've never read the book either is this is that in the book is like so i haven't read the book i need to and i'm going to because I'm i love this movie <laughs> and i just keep forgetting it's a book because this movie is perfect i i, I don't I don't often think of Willy Wonka as a book. It's it's a movie. But I need to go read the book. I'm hoping um, the book makes all of the parts where the people are like dying or being taken away as scary as the Hellbo scene. It's just a horror fucking novel from a kid's perspective. Yeah. But at the end, he gets a chocolate. It's definitely one of the things I'm most curious about. I want to know if there's those scary elements or if it's just... Um, if he's just eccentric. Yeah. <clears throat> um, but... Yeah, that scene is fantastic. Um, I mean, every kid gets their, their you know, destined end by their own vices. You know, that's kind of the whole point of the movie. Really, is like the yeah, fat kid can't, can't help himself. The kid that wants to be on TV can't fucking wait to, you know, can't control himself and has to get in front of the TV. It's all it's about self control, really. Yeah, I, I, it didn't dawn me till this viewing that each time that they get eliminated it's kind of catered to them yeah obviously the big candy room the overindulgent kid can't help himself yeah um the tv with mike tv is kind of on the nose yeah uh 
Bruca salt with a golden egg. Oh, my my favorite my favorite one's probably the bad egg. Because <laughs> there's just like it. Because just the part where she run, falls in the hole, and then he's just like, oh, guess she was a bad egg, and then he's just ready to move on. <laughs> like that shit right. kills me. Next, oh yeah, that goes to the furnace, and her dad's just like, what? Yeah, it's like. And then he goes into it and he's a bad egg. Like, that part's just funny. Because it's simpler than the other ones. The other ones are so elaborate. She just starts singing like she's going to take over the fucking world but falls through a hole while she's singing. Mm-hmm. Which is fitting, too. It's, so that, I think that one's perfect. Yeah. Uh, so I think there's some overlap between our favorite scenes. Joe, did you have something besides the the iconic Candyland or the, the Hellboat? Um, you know, I like all the scenes where... Uh, in the beginning, where it just shows how desperately poor Charlie's family is, um, his mom's got to work all night washing clothes, and uh, his grandparents are all uh, uh, apparently invalids and stuck in bed. Um, I really liked all <laughs> those scenes. <clears throat> yeah, that I mean, they give Charlie a solid <laughs> foundation. No, I mean, um. Uh, it's obviously, I mean, like the beginning is for me not the not the beginning of the movie, but when they first are going into the factory, um, I I like the most because it's that like, who the fuck is this Willy Wonka guy? No one's seen him in a year. It says they they say like twenty years or something crazy. I think don't they? Yeah. And then he comes out wearing a purple suit with a cane, and then like pretends to fall over, but does a cartwheel and like. You're like, what is okay? So this guy's got something going on here. That's weird. And then yeah, going in, one's... and it's just like they get all tangled up in this room, and they're like, who's touching me and pushing around? And it just, it's it's like a funhouse little thing that happens, and it's it, it really lays out like that something is going to happen weird here. Like it's not just going to mm-hmm. be the tour of a factory. Yeah. I mean, that's a good part to like because, I mean, the most iconic part of this movie for me is Gene Wilder. <clears throat> and I guess that the whole elaborate him walking out of the factory and the cane getting stuck in the ground and him somersaulting, that was his idea? That wasn't part of the story, I guess. I mean, maybe it was and maybe he read the book and that was something that he wanted to make sure he got to do. But he said that he took the role with one condition that he does that because he wants everyone to be wondering whether he's lying or telling the truth for the rest of the movie. So I think that he just was so perfect for that role. Yeah, yeah. it definitely worked. I mean, that's exactly what that scene does. Cause the rest of the time you're just like, what is going on with this guy? <laughs> like it opens up to a, he has a, a room where everything's made of candy that you can eat. And you're like, what? What just happened? What's going on here? Like, who are those little people over there? Oompa Loompas. What the fuck are you talking about, man? Like, just everything Willy Wonka does in this whole movie is the only reason why it's redeeming. And, like, at the end when they go to Wonka's office and everything's just cut in half. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's crazy. Him angrily <laughs> opening the safe to get the... the photocopy of the uh uh what the thing they signed at the beginning the contract they signed at the very beginning yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> just how, opening half a safe <laughs> yeah how, how how good is that office like everything's in it i love that i i was gonna say when you said was there anything else in the iconic scenes i gotta say the set for his office was fantastic yeah it was it was it was so good it was so good even the magnifying glass he's using to read yeah. the contract is cut in half <laughs> it's in half it's just yeah who came up with that i need see i need to read the book and um yeah how much is different how much is different because i mean this movie is is so good in my opinion that how did the author hate it hate it so much how different was the book it it, because it's going to be so hard for it to be better than this movie yeah usually uh, usually every movie book combo deals with the opposite problem uh, so it's going to be interesting if the book's just a fucking stinker, bro. Yeah, I guess the version of the movie that Roald Dahl signed off on, he signed off on it before. There was no music. This wasn't a musical. No. Mm-hmm. 
they came back and added it, which is so weird because it's such a big part of the movie. The kids all sing. I mean, Veruca Salt, I guess, sings. Uh, the Oompa Loompas singing. Dude, that dude, that dude was pissed back in the fucking late sixties, early seventies about music. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's just weird that it, how how stale this movie might have been if they didn't break into song every once in a while. Mm-hmm. It would have been way more depressing and sad. Like it, it just added a lot of lev- levity to everything when they when they're singing. Like if the candy man didn't break into song and kind of make it feel like a movie movie instead of like a serious scene. Yeah. Then it's just a man talking to kids. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> yeah. He, he was just uh, it, I mean nowadays maybe it wasn't creepy in the 70s but I mean that guy seemed pretty creepy if he wasn't uh <laughs> for a movie. And then um the parts where Gene Wilder's singing it just adds so much to his character. Like when yeah. he's humming on the boat and all that, it's just a uh, who who got this movie developed and then went back and said we need music because I mean they kind of hit it on the head. It'd be so weird to watch this with all the music cut out. <clears throat> I couldn't imagine it actually. It'd be weird. I'm reading. It looks like one of the reasons too. While rolled roll roll. <laughs> See, it's so hard to say. <laughs> Why it's missing it. Why the Ronald original? While the original author, why he disowned it was, he didn't meet the deadlines for the script, so they rewrote it. Even though it's his name mm. on there, it was rewritten by another person because Roald couldn't meet the deadlines for the movie that they gave him, and he he thought it should have been more about Charlie and not Willie. Interesting. Well, the book is called Charlie and the Chocolate yeah. Factory, right? So this is Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory. <clears throat> yeah, that's interesting. But uh, you know, this is a—it's uh, a timeless movie. Uh, everyone, you know, I feel like everyone in the world has seen this thing at this point, or at least they better have. Yeah, I just wanted to talk about it because it's one of my favorites. But I doubt I'm saying or we're saying anything that's new to anybody or convincing anyone to watch it. But uh. I mean. My opinion's out there now. It's yeah. perfect. There's a couple things that happen in this movie that, like, y- you know, I-, I guess I really haven't seen it since I was a child because, like I said, I don't really like musicals, and this is definitely a musical, so I wanted to hate this, and I liked it in the end, but really there's, like, like Slugworth, when he shows up um, to all these kids and, like, whispers in their ear as, like, they're getting interviewed on TV. No one's <laughs> yeah. no one's like who's this weird fucking creeper with a giant scar in his face like whispering to children. Yeah, there's definitely like I call them movie movie yeah. elements like this is just for film. Like obviously <clears throat> they're like kids sitting on their own couch eating dinner mm-hmm. doing interviews for this news broadcast and this creepy dude with a scar down his face just shows up on camera. Hey. <laughs> hey kid. <laughs> <laughs> and he gets like close to him like he gets creepy close like he like is like holding like veruca salt's hand and like i'm like this is i don't know this and the beginning <laughs> when they go to the fucking candy shop the candy man like gives just is throwing candy at kids and later when charlie goes in to like buy a piece of candy he's like holding his hand out like where's the money hey, at, uh- man <laughs> yeah, it's just like, that, oh, poor Charlie. Charlie's cocked here, man. That that sucks. Yeah, that may be. I I took note of that as well. It cracked me up pretty bad. Just nothing's <laughs> just, going for Charlie. No, Candyman is in the the throes of music, just singing his heart out, <laughs> tossing candy around for free, just throwing just like, shit not. away, and then just. Then Charlie Sorry. rolls in with a penny to his name and says, I'd like to buy a chocolate bar, sir. I'm depressed. And the kid, guy's just like, pay up. Pay or up. Get denied. <laughs> you want to get your kneecaps broken or you want to give me that quarter you found? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, that. those are all the best parts to me. Um, the thing I didn't like most was Uncle Joe. He made mm-hmm. me a little upset. Dude, fuck Uncle Joe. Grandpa Joe, not Uncle Joe. Fuck Uncle Grandpa Joe. Grandpa? 
Yeah, Uncle Uncle Junkie. Uncle Grandpa. Grandpa Joe. I mean, sabotage Charlie. Charlie wasn't going to... Charlie almost doesn't get the end prize because at one point in the story, Charlie takes the fizzy drink and drinks it when Willy Wonka says not to. So this is supposed to be where Charlie gets kicked out of the story, but he doesn't because... His grandpa made him do it? Well, because they don't see him do it. Yeah. And he doesn't like need help from the Oompa Loompas to get escorted out of the factory. He, Him and Grandpa Joe drink the drink, almost meet their doom, but then burp to let to deflate themselves and meet back up with the group. And the group doesn't notice that they were gone. But Grandpa, that was Grandpa's Joe. Grandpa's Joe's. Oh, yeah, you got there, huh, buddy? <laughs> that was Granny Joe. That was Grandpa Joe's idea. Charlie wasn't going to break the rules, but Grandpa Joe is just kind of a stinker. He's sitting in bed his whole life, uh, kind of relying on Charlie and his mom to take care of him. And then Charlie shows up with the ticket and says, I get to bring someone to the factory. And Grandpa Joe jumps up. All of a sudden. <laughs> all yeah. He's just like, the last 10 years, I haven't used my legs. Uh, cure, It's cured with good news. Uh, and then, like, not even that scene. The first time they talk to Grandpa Joe and he's just like, yeah, I can't get out of bed. And he's like, they're just like, oh, it, it, that sucks, Dad. And he just, if only the floor wasn't so cold. And you're like, the floor <laughs> being cold is keeping you from going to fucking work and making the floor not cold, motherfucker. What's going on here? Yeah, he's he sucks. <laughs> I mean, there's like a whole uh, subreddit called "Fuck Grandpa Joe." Where Are you serious? Just, yeah, I need to go wa- watch. Yeah, I need to go read watch. that. I need to someone make a video on it so I go watch it. The top <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just everything Grandpa Joe does kind of sucks, except for motivates Charlie. He's like a bad influence for Charlie. Now that I think about it, pretty much. It it's just. He even, he even he even like at the end was trying to like blame Duder and say let's get out of here let's give uh Mr. Smallballs his candy or whatever. So like yeah. Yeah, from the beginning to the end he's really trying to be a bad influence. It's Charlie that decides to do the right thing at the end and win. Right. Mr. Smallballs. <laughs> Is that what he says? <laughs> Mr. No. Smallwart. Oh. Mr. Slugnuts or whatever. What's his Mr. name? Slug- Slugworth. Um. It's just real fast, because I've got the Her Wikipedia shaming. page for the book pulled up. I want to tell you what the other uh, names that were re- that the kids originally had. Oh, I'm excited for this. Okay, so like a couple of them are, th- there's uh, Clarence Crump, Birdie Upside, and Terrence Roper. They were cut. <laughs> um, Veruca Wait, Salt. these are people... These are people in the book. They didn't make it to the movie. No, no, these they are... were cut out of like the original draft of his book. Okay, gotcha. Uh, Veruca Salt was renamed. Was originally named Elvira Ant Whistle. Uh, he really <laughs> he, uh, Violet Glockenberry. Okay. Um, but anyway, they're like mo- uh, Augustic Spottle, Mary Pike. Like they're all like these like fucking ridiculous names. Man, Roll Dahl was J.K. Rowling before J.K. Rowling. But Mike TV's <laughs> original name is what really made me want to say this. So Mike TV was originally named Herpes Trout. <laughs> <laughs> Herpes Trout. He wrote down the word Herpes Trout. And went, oh, yeah, this is it. This is it. <laughs> you know, maybe it meant Herpes grows up. Maybe it meant something else back then. <laughs> oh, you know, her- the Herpes. <laughs> <laughs> that's I, fantastic yeah it's just, Roald Dahl is maybe a uh, insane person um, dude and dude, if you think of that kid getting his name called at school to go last name first he's just trout herpes, dude, like, trout what, herpes. Kind of fish, what, what kind of fish you fucking <laughs> so Kiefer you said like this movie's full of nobodies but like all the kids are nobodies but a lot of the uh, like parents are like pretty like well um acted like character actors jack albertson's been in a whole bunch of shit like they're not probably popular where you know we're not gonna know them but they're he's been in like a whole bunch of shit um 
Have Roy they been Kinnear? in anything notable? Because even the director, well, did the director has a list of things attributed to him, but nothing close to even, I mean, even remotely close to Willy Wonka. Oh Who, no, they're like nothing as big as how like culturally impactful like Willy Wonka has been, but uh, it, they've all like they they're actual like actors and have done a whole bunch of stuff. I mean. Jack Albertson uh, was in fucking Chico and the Man. He was Ed Brown, which is like the main character, one of like the main characters, which was a TV show. If you're not 107 years old, yeah, I'm. I'm not. I I don't remember anybody for anything Roy besides Kinnear's Gene Wilder. Like a whole bunch of shit. Uh, he plays I mean, Veruca Salt's or uh, is it Veruca's dad? Uh, yeah. Oh, didn't didn't he play fucking Jim Belushi in SNL? Yep, that's it. Gunter Meiser, who plays Slugworth, played Hitler. Uh, I've seen Gunter Meiser before. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> no. Um, but the, but it's got a bunch of character actors. I, they're not. They they obviously didn't do. I think anything as culturally impactful as um, Willy Wonka. Uh. Yeah. It, 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 overall, I think good movie. I like it. Yeah. It's, <laughs> I, what, what I like about it is that there's things I didn't pick up on as a kid that I can reappreciate watching it now. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's some good it, humor. It's got a different... It it, it hits different at, at 30 than it did at 10. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that that mostly... Everything we talked about pretty much sums up what I thought. I think it's a great movie. I like to watch it around the holidays uh, for reasons I don't really like, know yet. Like why? I mean, was it because you want to torment your mom because of the Oompa Loompas? No, I think maybe it was one of those things that was broadcast on television during like Thanksgiving or around this time of year. I don't know. I just remember watching it during the holidays. It's, I mean, centric around candy. Um. The songs, I I don't know. I used to play a couple of the Candyman song uh, around Christmas time. I think that was actually performed by a few different artists. the The Candyman song. Uh, Sammy Anyways. Davis Jr. was like Candy video, everyone knows <clears throat> Sammy Davis Jr.'s version of it. Yeah, this is my non holiday holiday movie. So I wanted yeah. to watch. There's the lesser known uh, Van Halen cover of the Candyman, where David Lee Roth actually just hits his dickhead as hard as he can with some uh, rock candy. <laughs> oh, it's like the xylophone. It's my favorite yeah. version. Yeah. It's pretty good. Was there anything you guys didn't like about <laughs> this movie, though? Like things I didn't like. Yeah, um, was there anything that you, you know, didn't? I thought that the 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 way that they did the Oompa Loompa songs where they did the weird text to the screen, like brat. And like, it was, it was weird. The rest of the movie wasn't stylized mm-hmm. with like mm-hmm. weird, like, it just was very seventies. Yeah. But how would you say that they did that? Cause the movie is just straightforward mm-hmm. camera work. But then during the song, they did weird, like, it looks like a PowerPoint presentation where like they put the Oompa Loompas up in a corner and the rest of the screen is black and they do the bouncing letters like a sing-along song. Yeah. And that felt out of place. I didn't like how they did that. It could have just been. That was for the kids, bro. You wouldn't understand. Um, I guess. I mean, I didn't bother me when I was little, but I didn't like that they did that because it could have just been like the rest of the movie. Yeah. So they just, they, they made some weird choices, but I mean, as far as things I didn't like, it's Grandpa Joe. <laughs> yeah, but, Grandpa, Grandpa Joe sucks, but I don't, I don't really have any negatives about the movie. I, I like watching it. It's just fun, easy to watch. The songs don't bother. Besides, if you got to spend two hours doing something, it's, why not that? Yeah. What about you, Joe? Uh, what did you? I mean, I, I I made it known I don't like musicals. I think all the songs could have been taken out, really, and it would have been a fine, you know, may, maybe the Candyman song, you could have left that in. is like, you know, it's a very golden age Hollywood thing to have 
songs in movies when they probably don't feel necessary. Um, you could have left that one in. Um, but it really isn't that. I feel like a lot of the songs I didn't give a fuck about. Like, I don't care. I'm glad you got a golden ticket, but like Grandpa Joe getting out of bed to sing that with you, Charlie's insane. His like depressed mom singing Cheer Up Charlie. Like, the songs I, were the low point for me. I, I, I'd i like <clears throat> a cut with no songs. <laughs> but then you get the Tim Burton, Johnny Depp the, one, and it's like... The side cut of it later, it's going to come out in four parts. <laughs> <laughs> I would say on that note that I didn't... I don't think the songs were good, but it's hard to imagine the movie without them. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um... Any uh, closing thoughts? Any recommendations or non non recommendations? Um, I definitely recommend the movie. I think it's a lot of fun. Show it to your kids. Uh, give them a hug when the boat part happens. Uh, <laughs> watch it yourself. It kicks ass, and you can watch it as many times as you want. Um, definitely recommend if you haven't seen it or haven't seen it in a while. Uh, as far as a score, what I would give it. Like an eight out of ten, eight point five out of ten. It's good. Yeah, I'd probably give it an eight, an eight as well. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I mean, if you haven't watched it, watch it just for Gene Wilder's performance. Um, but really, I'd give this like a like a like a six. I don't need to watch it ever again. Like, I don't hate it. I, obviously, I just it's pretty, it's it's like pretty average to me. Uh, Gene Wilder saves it. If he wasn't Willy Wonka, I probably would not give a fuck about this movie at all. Yeah, I mean, without Gene Wilder, this is, I mean, nowhere near an eight. But yeah, uh, as it stands for me, it, that's where it's at. But yeah, I've got some different opinions. Though. Everybody should watch it and then see where you where you sit. Yep. Uh, tell us in the comments if you agree or disagree. Write me a dissertation. Uh, <laughs> write me a 10 page essay tell me why you're wrong and i'm right there um you go. who's who's choosing movie next week and is there a movie chosen it's a uh, mine i believe right Ooh, i, I... think so because before this was mortal Kombat. yeah right? so it's Over my turn okay yeah. yeah i have a uh i have a pick for next week um i know previously we had kind of talked about maybe doing holiday stuff but i didn't want to do that, I decided. Um, I want to watch A Bridge Too Far. A Bridge Too Far? Mm-hmm. It's a World War II. Is that one of them British movies where everyone's a spy and they say slick shit? <laughs> Not really. I'm looking it up. Um, you're talking about a 1977 drama history war film? Yeah. It's, mm. got, it's got Sean O'Connell in it. I'm excited to watch this. I love war movies and I've never watched it. Yeah, I'll watch. I'm down. Uh, I I have a holiday movie. So hopefully if we look at our schedule here, kids. Okay, dude, it, we can release my podcast on Christmas. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. that'd be fun. If we, uh, yeah, if we watch and record by this weekend, we'll have Hell a yeah. holiday movie for next week. Yeah, then, I'll definitely then, watch it. then a bridge too far, and then after that, the ultimate surprise for the holidays for you guys. He's gonna pick like Spooky. elf or something. <laughs> you cannot predict my mental state. I'm so down for elf though. It's it's a great movie. Yeah. I'm What's not... the Tim Allen movie where he turns into Santa Claus? That's what I think killed gonna... the, the Santa, Santa Claus? Claus. See, that's a spicy pick, but you're also wrong. Dang. You guys, you guys aren't gonna get it, and you're gonna suffer. What about the one with Arnold Schwarzenegger? Okay, uh, I wish Jingle I could pick All the Way? Because that's a perfect way. movie. I'm just going to pick Twins with him and Danny DeVito. That's what I'm <laughs> <laughs> Every Arnold Schwarzenegger movie is a Christmas movie. Because he was Jingle All the Way. Pick, I could pick The Sixth Day. <laughs> well, I'm excited I mean, to watch uh, Bridge Too Far and find out. Movie. Oh, yeah. Make sure you tune into the Bridge Too Far podcast so that you guys can hear what your boy picks too all right i think that about wraps it up appreciate you guys stopping by thank you adios guys thanks <laughs>